Hey. How goes it? Hey, Ryan. How you doing, man? This is a good week for uh, us to be uh, sort of bail. I, I actually understand this week fairly good. <laughs> I yeah, mean, I thought that's why I didn't want to push it off because I'm like, this is a relatively straightforward chapter. I thought maybe we could probably just like, you know, whip through it. Actually, quickly. yeah, I actually uh, started setting up one of the uh, 10.5. I, I started setting up. Um, some of the models and stuff so we could work walk through it. Oh. Um, I mean just like literally like taking like the data and like writing I've only written like there's like there's only there's like four like sub steps or whatever and so I yeah. um, I just started like a bit ago then I got sidetracked um yeah you know how it is um how was uh I was sorry about Monday too. By the way, I, I forgot it was a holiday, and I had, I was out of town. Um, uh, no worries. I mean, that also was relatively. Uh, uh, there was like a little bit. Of, you'll you'll watch the video, but I assume, but you'll see that it's actually. And you read the chapter, I hope. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it's a, it was a relatively straight compared to the previous chapters. I felt that chapter was like, okay, this is all stuff we already know we've, or we've already been exposed to, and now it's just another way of doing something with with the function operators and you know. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's. Uh, um... I didn't, it wasn't like blow your mind type things like <laughs> so. yeah yeah actually I, i've been trying to use that stuff for my um like work i'm actually trying to write more functions and stuff for work cool because it's like why else am i doing this you know what i mean it's like well i like i said in the chat i said function operators to me are i i'm used to using them from other languages so I, I maybe i don't write good r code like that but i often do use like if i have some data transformation thing i might write that as a function operator that takes a bunch of arguments for the particular that particular transformation I want to do and then takes the then returns a function that takes the data and transforms it right right although I'm reading now about how um how you should I mean the better way I guess the better way to do that is use tidy models and the um uh what do they call it yeah I forgot already recipes uh to capture that kind of stuff because then it's more properly integrated through the whole ecosystem but yeah I haven't yeah, actually that's... done that yet I haven't learned yeah. the tidy models completely yet <laughs> Yeah, that's actually I, I wanted to learn that too. So yeah, there's anyway, a, it's, yeah. There's a book club on it, but I haven't. I mean, obviously, oh, tiny models. Yeah, I'm, we got we got our hands full. Man. <laughs> exactly. You know, it's always like another book club I want to join, <laughs> but I'm like, dude, we gotta seriously. Let's uh, bring it. Let's I'm like, oh, JavaScript. Yeah, give me no, nope, no, nope, resist, resist. <laughs> let's, let's, let's learn one thing good. You know yeah. what I mean? Just for once. Let's. I don't yeah. know. So. Um, yeah. yeah. So this. One is linear regression with multiple predictors. And again, it's kind of a wrap, thing, kind of a nice chapter, like just taking things we've already learned and adding things. And for me, I thought that, mm -hmm. I'll just give you my quick take on the chapter. And then I thought that everything was already things I'd seen before for the most part. I think there's only one thing mm -hmm. that I hadn't seen before. What was it? I mean, interactions, done that, indicated variables, I know about that. Um, okay, well, 10.5 is one of those things I thought was pretty interesting. Because yeah. we, we looked at that in the Bayes rule thing in terms of like multi-level, but here he's doing it as a block thing. So we should definitely go through that if you have that. But let's come back to that for just a second because I just want to look at the rest of the chapter now. Um, yeah, that's fine. Okay, so propagating the uncertainty again, we did that before, but now you do it in the context of multiple Mm -hmm. things um what else was there the mathematical notation is pretty straightforward weighted regression is kind of interesting i've done that before it's more i've done it a lot in science because in that case it's a little different problem when you're fitting a model because i'm making measurements and i know the error of my measurements right because mm -hmm. my measurement apparatus like or at least i try to characterize the best i can so and some of the measurements have bigger errors than others so i naturally have to do a, a weighted fit um, but this is yeah. interesting that he offers other ways you could, you might use it to, um, uh, using observed data that you've now, you know, summarized in some way. And then of course it has some mean and standard deviation, but that in, in your regression model. Kind of right. So I've always, I've done number three before, I guess I've never done number one or number two, but, and I guess we could talk at some point about the, what do you call the secret weapon one at the end here, right? That's the other thing. So for me, the things that are interesting with the secret weapon thing. Mm -hmm. Which I guess is just kind of an interesting name for something you might think to do anyway. Actually, hold on. What was the secret? Now, now, now I'm confused. Um, 
Oh, wait, wait a minute. What was the secret weapon? That was fitting the same model to many data sets. Oh, right, 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 right. Yeah. Kind of, kind of the pure, what do, you, what do you, what we call it? The unpooled model from Bayes rules. That's completely unpooled. Um, right. Idea. So, but the idea would be like you would fit the same data to many models, and then you then can then plot, uh, you know, plot the results of those fits versus some other parameter that you're varying. In this case, it was versus year in the example he gave, right? So he has, mm. uh, um, he's actually plotting the coefficients as they change throughout the year. So that's, the, that's the secret weapon. How's the coefficient of whatever it is you're concerned about change as a function of time, for example, right? And right. You can see yeah. that probably has a lot of applications, you know? But and you also can, I guess you could also, I mean, I, I hadn't thought about that, but like one of the things you could do is um, use that to, um, well, I mean, if you if you fit it repeatedly, you can kind of get a sense of like how it does over time, right? Or I don't right, know. that's what he's saying. That's exactly what that's what the okay. secret weapon, right? To fit it repeatedly and see how it does over time. That's a good summary. Of it. Yeah, maybe. I was just, sorry, I'm just repeating what you already said. Sorry, you, um, you I'm actually trying to do in your in your yeah. experience the um, the collinearity problem. Do you remember that from Bayes oh, rules? Yeah. I assume. Um, so there's an exercise which I just finished doing where. He, ask you like generate artificial coal in your data and look at it I'm like okay I can see what it does um but I'm just wondering like because you do a lot of data analysis you must run to like mm -hmm. do, you, do you routinely like check your coefficients to see if they're you know if they're yeah. like oh oh yeah there's, I bet some, I'm, yeah there's some, something called vis of so a variable and inflation function uh variance inflation function so you basically um what you do is you create like a uh, uh, a regression equation just doesn't even matter what the outcome is because all you're looking at is the relationship between the predictors okay what it generates is this this vif thing which is like it depends on who you talk to but like it's a it's a statistic an estimate that like ranges between zero and like really big numbers and if it's over like you know i don't know some people say it's like a couple a value of a couple two or three or then some people say five or ten or whatever and what, yeah, I mean, and then, and then I, you, what you do is kind of look at, you know, what the value is for each um, predictor. And if you're getting some, some of them have like really high values, it probably means they're collinear, you know? Ah. So um, this happens a lot in like health care stuff, like where, where people want to use like. I would like, imagine, right? Yeah. Oh, I have, you know, I have their BMI and I, oh, I have their height and I have their weight. Well, it turns out that BMI is, you know, perfectly, you know, correlated with those things so it's like yeah I, I don't know I mean just you want to do some stuff to like make it um yeah um so there's a, there is a tool that's what I guess what I was, there's some tool to detect these things like in uh if you're doing the Bayesian method in here like Stan ARM you will get you know draws from the pair you can actually plot you know the, the pair plot of all the parameters you could really just see oh this one you know is this is where this is where the the, the collinearity is really getting sticky right yeah. so you, you, you can see it you know, or you can just compute the, the pairwise correlation uh coefficients between the simulations as they calls them he calls them the draws of the parameters which is i just did i was wondering how that was done like in practice without Bayes. and so there is this tool called the variable inflation factor. that's pretty interesting because yeah. it, it's interesting because if you just look at the result of a fit it's not obvious that there's oh these errors are big i guess they just are it's not i don't know immediately that there's a that, that these all oh, these two these two coefficients these two predictors are correlated and these core fit coefficients are therefore going to be correlated um yeah and we guess you could visually check that but it's something it'd be nice to have some automated way to because you know maybe you forget or maybe you don't think it has to be part of your procedure i guess right exactly yeah actually um well i mean this isn't I'll, I'll put like one little um thingy here of this is a, a nice little write-up of it but um yeah take, oh, a, okay. take a look at that i mean I appreciate it yeah um i think also yeah in general i mean i don't, I don't know if this is even relevant i mean i guess they talk about do they talk about colonial in this i don't think so right yeah, he does. Does he? There's so many things. Uh, um, actually, yeah, I was trying I mean, to find I, where he does, but he, I thought he mentioned it briefly. I can't. I can't find it. Yeah. Um, I got. I got really kind of hung up on the interactions. I've been doing a lot of interaction stuff. Um, so that's kind of what I focused on in the chapter. And the whole oh, here it is. Yeah, it's on page one forty six at the bottom. It's, oh, okay. Yeah, that's. He doesn't say much about. It. He just says, "Oh, this is something you have to worry." About. <laughs> 
because you know not identifiable well i think one of the just i mean maybe to tie a bow on it or whatever is i would say a lot of times you have collinearity and it's a problem if like whoever your stakeholders are if they're like really hung up on using all of their predictors you know hell or high come hell or high water and they think that somehow having like more predictors is some kind of a right right it makes it necessarily better um yeah the weighted regression thing is is cool i i you know i i feel like we're, um, you have to be like an epidemiologist to really like want to do this you know what I mean? right? <laughs> you know what i mean i tend to work with like smaller sample data so um you know um that being said though like sometimes i have been in things where like we have survey data where there's like a bunch of different subsets and the different populations male female you know racial ethnic and like different conditions subconditions and, and whatnot and so yeah you want like you know, the right subconditions to have more of a voice in terms of you know me your measure if you're measuring like attitudes about like you know a, a treatment or something like that you want to make sure the people that are the most common you know subgroup or whatever are their voices being heard the best so to speak but um yeah anyway um, I'm trying to do like this thing because the last item is um, in R. I'm trying to split the sample because I want you to do like this 200 to 200 thing. So I'm trying to, um, I haven't done that in a while. Hold on. So um, um, what is this you're doing? Uh, oh, so, so like, so if you look at the very 10.5, if you look at the very last one, it's like split the sample into. Um, well, yeah. exercise 10.5, is that what you're talking about? Oh, yeah, sorry. Sorry, my bad. Yeah. Oh, okay, I'm looking at... Oh, Kid IQ, okay. I didn't do that one. Only one I've done so far is 10.9, cold in area. Well, that's what I was interested in. Yeah. Well, actually, here's what, you know, here's what I'll do. This is stupid. I mean, I don't have to be, it doesn't have to be random. I'll just split it into two, um, you know, um, things. So... Again, so, so, and then yeah, we can walk through well, ten point five if you want. That's cool. Um, okay. Yeah. Go for it. Um, just wanted to. Uh, I'm not even sure if I'm doing this right, but we'll see. Uh, I mean, this isn't the way you'd want to do it, but. All right, let me do this. Let me, um, about, I'll share my screen. Go for it. And. Um, I, mean, oh, I, I see you are, yep. Yep. Um, so yeah, you see. Ah, okay, you know what I was doing right now? I was scrolling through ISLR too because I was sure I vaguely remember learning about that VIF, that VIF thing, and yeah, it does yeah, talk yeah. about it in there. Okay. Yeah, so, I got to so, reread that. <laughs> yeah, can you see my? Uh, you can see yes. My, okay. Okay. Um, okay. So this is, by the way, um, I said this before, but um, there is a great resource uh, for this. I think it's. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think I've said this before, but yeah, like you can, all the data sets from this, um, you know, are here. So you can, yeah, so that's where, that's where I'm getting it, obviously. Okay. Um, so yeah, kid IQ. So we're looking at um, some kind of test score with kids. And then like we have moms, whether she graduated high school or not, whether, what her IQ is what her um work is and now actually now that i'm thinking about that like what what do oh yeah so this is um i think this is some kind of categorical thing i forget what this is. okay and then and then the kids or then the mom's age and then okay so the first thing they ask is course to age right yeah, yeah. so um fit, fit a uh, regression of child test scores on uh, mom, mom's age display the the data and fitted model check the assumptions um um and then interpret the slope kind of stuff so yeah this is uh what i did first although you know i mean i, I hadn't even really run it okay so 
now we're seeing the effects of, and you know, one of the things I did like about this chapter, by the way, is because I, I know we're all guilty of this is like, you know, the way he says to talk about kind of like um, one value of the coefficient versus another, right? Because the tendency, and, I, and I'm guilty of this too, is to do the causal inference thing, which is as you move, you know, from one year right, to right. the next, you, you're in the increase in blah, blah, blah becomes point blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? Right. And what he's right. saying is, in the, in to, is the, that's very difficult because now you're making this implicit sort of causal statement. And instead what you should be is like, if you have two individuals that are matched on all things except for age, the, the difference in you know, age, you know, one to the, to the next would be, you know, that, right? And so that way you're not talking about the same person changing. You're talking about, you know, this implicit comparison between or not impl explicit comparison between two individuals, right? So uh, this is the test score if, um, but yeah, I mean, if, if mom was age zero, the, the test score, <laughs> which is right. always a helpful uh, you yeah. know, um, statistic, you know, we always want to know what test scores would be if moms failed to exist. Um, well, you're still pretty good. <laughs> yeah, apparently it's you're still getting a C minus, even if you're not legitimately born. And yeah, that's another thing. I I will say this because um, I, I actually has caused me some issues in the workplace. There are some people who get really hung up on having interpretable intercepts. I don't know if you have this experience or not. Like um, they want you know, to always to center all of your variables, yeah. and it's like okay, but we're not doing any interactions and. Like why? I mean, you know, so I'm like, why, why do that? Well, that's just because you know that's what you should do. I'm like, no, 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 that we really should do that. But okay, whatever. I mean, yeah, you can do that. You know, if it's if it's necessary. But anyway, so from you know, if we compare two two kids with moms who vary on only you know one age, we would expect the test score to go up by 0.7 points from the lower year. You know. To the to the to the higher year child is that am I saying that correctly? So, yeah, I think so. Know, I'm trying to say it like in the non causally. You know, if the kid yeah. grows up one more year, we would expect you know more 0. 0.7 points, right, or whatever. Um, okay, so then repeat this by including mom's education, which I'm assuming is just whether she finished high school or not. That's the only variable. If you look uh... at because the only variables we have is whether or not she finished high school, what her work is, which I don't even know what these variables refer to and then the mom's yeah. age. forget about the by the way i tried to create this id variable but it says it does say in the next um in part c it does say create an indicator variable with the high school oh yeah well i don't know maybe in my what's the mother's education let's see we got mom high school indicator the iq wouldn't be at work yeah what's mom work Hold on, let me see. Maybe, maybe if I look back in this um, kid IQ data set, there's there is this other kid IQ or this child IQ data set, but it's only no. mom's age, education, and then this. So maybe this is. I don't know. Maybe this because is, it says has access to children's test scores at age three. Mom's education and maybe maybe mom's education is IQ. Well, I mean, we could just use IQ and just press on. I mean, that'd be an interesting correlation anyway. No one's going to yeah. check our work. We should do that. You should do the IQ to see what that does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, hold on. Let me do this. Let me just download this. Just um, you, I, I think just using the data you have, just use the. Oh, okay, just use that. That's fine. Okay. Mom IQ, right? right? Mom yeah. IQ as a surrogate or just actually maybe it's interesting what mom IQ does. We can always, we can, and we can always um, yeah. dichotomize mom IQ if, if need be. Yeah, maybe I'm using the wrong data set. Who cares though? No. Um, so go. Oh, do you, you remember you can put refresh equals zero to. Oh, that's right. Yes. I, I spitting meant, out of, yeah. <laughs> spitting out of crapple. <laughs> there is something kind of like um, satisfying about having it happen, right? Because it's like this, all this like churning, yeah. you know, it's churning it's like, through all yeah, this. Things are happening. Exactly. There's this sense of industrial <laughs> sort of generation of, of stuff. You know, there is something kind of like. Um, yeah. Um, you know, so, interesting. Okay, so now the so mom age is less important. It looks like, right? Right, and also less significant. I guess the well, yeah, the bigger... yeah. I mean, it's certainly this, this, yeah, this value is. is Look at the mom IQ though. That's yeah, 
Interesting. Kind of makes sense, right? I mean, like, I mean, I mean, you know, I mean. Um, and then, well, let's do this actually. Um, okay, so here's here's what I did. Let's let's do this. We're going to include an interaction between um, um, education. Excuse me, age and IQ. Let's do that. Okay, and so here's what I did. This, this is super lame. So the entire data set is 434. So I just created um, um, two. I mean, I was going to do a, a fancy like random sampling thing, but I I didn't have time. So um, so what did you do? You just slice. Oh, I just, I'm just saying, like, take the first 200. We're, 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 they want us to split the sample, right? So they're saying. You know what you should do instead is uh, maybe, can, is there a shuffle command in R? At least that way you, you could shuffle the 400 of them. If you take the first 200 and the second time, will it be random? Uh, is there I mean, I think, shuffle? Yeah, I think it's fine. I have R open. There's no, there's no shuffle. There's no shuffle. I mean, it's, I mean, it's fine. I mean, it's, I shuffle a vector. Come on, man. Got to be existing. <laughs> <Shuffling>. <laughs> I do <laughs> like that idea of shuffling. Like somehow. Oh, you like, can yeah, yeah, you just use uh, sample one through the number of rows, with, and then that'll give you a list of indexes, then an index by that, that'll shuffle it. Mm. Well, anyway, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll try to get, I'll, I'll, I'll look into that for future stuff, but um, okay. okay, so this is kid score, and so now we're doing mom's age um, plus mom IQ plus, and we're adding some kind of uh i think th this is the um well they want you to do an interaction with the high school for the oh for, for the high, high school. school well because it, that one is a zero or one is just the indicator variable right oh right oh okay well you want to do that okay so then you want to just do age and then um, high school to, tr to try it because because i don't think we have education level because it's oh, wait, uh, I'm sorry. So part C, it wants you to know. So you're doing, if you do part D. Yeah. That's what we're doing right now. You split it. So it does yeah. say their age and education. Yeah, you're right. Age and education. Never mind. I'm trying to. So I, actually, let's just do this. Let's just do age by high school, just just as a way of like illustrating it. Who cares? Yeah, let's do that. That sounds like We're making this too complicated. We right? are. Yeah. Yeah. Or, I mean, that's, 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 what, that's, what, that's what data scientists do is take something <laughs> yeah, right. complicated and make it more complicated. Oh, I, I didn't. Of course, I didn't do my thing. So, what is it again? It's, what is it? It's um. What, what do you write? What do you write? For what? The, oh, the... refresh equals zero. It's hard to. I had to put a post-it number note on my computer because it's not documented and it's not easy to remember. Yeah. Anyway, it's actually That's... passed through to the inner stand thing. I heard read somewhere. Oh, oh I see. Oh wow! Well, look at this. What the hell is... happened? Oh no, we, we didn't do high school before, so we don't know what high school we to expect from high school. Oh right, right, right. We can go back and do that. By the way, one of the things I don't know if this is the case with Bayesian, but the minute you enter an interaction, the main effects become uninterpretable, right? Because of collinearity. Right. This this is always something you have to like prep people for because they have a lot of kid, like you know people like doctors and, and and people who know about research, but they forget about this, and so they go, oh no, the 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 effect of age is reversed. It flipped. What happened? You know, there's some right. kind of, it's like. You have this interaction term that's highly collinear, right? And so, yeah. what do you think is going to happen? <laughs> You're going to have, you know, it's going to mess up the whole picture. So interesting, though. Yeah. What What really matters is um, how well we can predict on the other two hundred, right? <laughs> how we, we, we did this? Yeah. The problem is, is, and I don't know if this is even in the book. Um, how How was he plotting these things? Um, uh, he just takes the average. Um, I think you just plot it directly, right? Just plot yeah, actually, hold on one second. Let me look at, um, I think I can actually, there's a package that I really like that I can, um, I can, I can uh, do here. Oh. Um, yeah, there's actually a package called SJPlot, which I really like. I don't know if, I Never think, I think it should serve here and I will, um, Once I get this, I can, I like to plot this just to see, but um, yeah. Okay. Oh, it's not installed or you misspelled it or yeah. Oh, cool. Is it, wait a minute, what did I do? 
SJ plot of the capital. Oh, I didn't calculate. I didn't. I didn't uh, capitalize. Does that capitalize matter? it. Yeah. No, it's of course it's always the way. It's very non-standard. Nobody else does that with their library names. But these guys decided to do that. <laughs> that. Oh, the uh, the staff. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, I know. Yeah. This is. Uh, yeah. Let me put this in the chat just so you know. Okay. This is uh, this is the, the guy who made this package. He's made a number of really nice contributions. Cool. Uh, uh, I think it's Brent Jacke, Jacke. I forget how to pronounce his last name, but he is. Um, yeah, it seems like he's really. Now that being said, I don't know if this works with Bayesian packages, so I could try this, and it's like a total friggin' mess. Um, it might work. It might work. Um, S three, man. It's S three. Yeah, I know. <laughs> like it. Um, Magic. Okay, so. I think this is it. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Get, get away. Have these some um, silly. All right. Okay. Now. Let's see if this says, my fear is it will say it doesn't work with our stand or whatever. Oh, here we go. Look at this. What the hell? That's awesome. Yes. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. So now we're all wow. doing this screen too. This is obviously, yeah. So for, for kids with, um, as moms, oh, this is awesome. Dude, look that at is that. great. Yeah. Even so has the good. errors on it. The parameter errors are in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is, and you can and you can make these mean different things. What is this? Okay, you you did link that, right? Yeah, you did. Okay. Yeah, SJ plot package. Yeah, uh, it's just you know I That's like it. Phenomenal. Because, yeah, a lot of times um, you know you just want to look at something real quick, and so like I like just you know you just plug in this plot underscore model, and then you say just look at the interaction. You can also just look at like the main effects and and whatnot, but yeah. So this is really cool. If the mom has graduated high school. With increased age, um, we get, you know, higher scores. Right. So it's and not really even that, you know, kind of mild effect. But when the mom didn't finish high school, there's a fairly strong effect. Right. I wonder why that would be. Well, because think about it, you know, as you know, if, as you're um, the older you are and, you know, the more set in your ways. I mean, yeah. you're, not, you're not and you're not you're not academically inclined. Right, because you didn't finish high school, right? You yeah, finish high school, and now you know you're and you've spent a lot of time on Facebook and learned a lot of wrong things. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, yeah, so I would say I would say like you know the effects of not being high school educated. Well, I mean, I guess I don't want this is where the, the causal inference language. Right, we don't want to make that, but yeah, yeah. Like the, the, to to, to, to to be careless, yeah. I would say that the causal yeah. inference story would be you know the effects of not graduating high school are, are um, they accumulate you know, over time, or, you know, or they increase as you get older, right? Because as you get older, you know, you know, you're farther yeah. away from someone who's been a student and, you know, you're farther away. That's from, true too, right? Yeah. So anyway, yeah, I love this. This is a cool, let's, um, just out of curiosity, um, I think it also does something. Okay. So let's just try this. Let's try to do yeah. IQ instead of high school. What it does is I think what it will do, and I think the default is to take yeah. like really extreme the, the, the most extreme okay. values but let's see what happens um okay so now we're, we're no high school just iq it'll either do that or it'll do like one line will be like above or below the mean or something like that oh there's no interaction though oh there is basically isn't. nothing well, okay well that's fine but we can still look at it i mean even if it's okay yeah so Wait, there's an mean, interaction. i think i think what happened was wow we had some really we had some really smart people in this sample 100 yeah. almost 40 that's like and they got dumber as they got older. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, 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 what I, so by the way, so th this is the default paper, the behavior of this. But you like could the first quart quartile, the second quart, uh, fourth quartile, so. thing like that. Um, let me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Since it's you just us, this is the problem. We let two people like who aren't just or aren't whose job it is isn't to present. Like you let us. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna start going down rabbit holes, man. Like yeah. This, this is uh, part of uh, our our problem. Is it's fun though. It's just so much fun. Yeah. So like um, the um, yeah, I think the the type you, equals interaction you're looking for. Yeah. You you can um, yeah, there's something I I used to 
because I know this, but yeah, so you can be like, okay, indicate the variables. Um, so like you can do like, I think the default is min max, right? So the oh, minimum okay. IQ is- Oh, low. okay. By the way, this is really low. Like, so that's, that's like, that's like, that's like you would call that person like developmentally disabled yeah at 70. so they look, it's min max so that makes yeah. sense right yeah and then yeah so then when you if you were to replace this with um mean now that's only if you know the, the moderator has to be continuous right but so if we did it like is, mean yeah. standard deviation so that's what's that um, values mediator value moderator values um yeah equals the, I think that should work. I was thinking about it. Yeah, so see. Oh, three lines. That's good. I yeah. Like so this so is one like, standard deviation and then the mean. Yeah. Yeah, then zero max and then quartiles. You can do that. So anyway, yeah. There does seem to be some interaction, despite the fact that that interaction coefficient was zero. I'm surprised by that. Yeah, well, it's probably just not enough to, you know, I mean, to, uh, yeah, that does seem obvious. Right home. Kind of weird, doesn't There's something it? wrong with that, right? I guess I wonder. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, also this is good question. I mean, it kind of goes in the way that you would expect, you know, yeah. with, with with greater age, having or not having um, education. Yeah, seems to do that. But yeah, no, I agree. I don't know what's going on here, but um, anyway, yeah. This anyway, that's my fun little thing. That's cool. Yeah. Um, you remember that tool. Yeah. What else? Let me just think about what else I, I, I gleaned from this. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I, I did like the, um, yeah, this, this counterfactual versus, um, uh, the, the, yeah. So like what I've been trying to practice is this predictive interpretation, right? Uh, I think, right. and, and, and what we tend to want to do is um, make the counterfactual interpretation, right? Like if we were to say, you know, the mom's uh, IQ went from 100 to 101, we would, you know, that that's more like a, now you're making a causal kind of inference kind of a deal. Right. Um, that's what this yeah. book does well, by the way, is it really does, you know, dig into these things and just like, you know, brush it aside. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, and also I like, you know, kind of the idea of like, you know, writing out you know, this idea of spelling out, like how, basically there's two different groups here. There's kids that do or don't have, you know, right. moms who graduate high school and, you know, like that kind of stuff. And they talk about, you know, when you should look for interactions. This, by the way, this is a really hard one because I have people, because once you get people like, once you get doctors and other like sort of uh, PIs and in, interested in interactions, now they're like, dude, just front all the interactions, you know, <laughs> of course, it's not what you should do, right? That's terrible, right? And so, like I had one person where we had 125 people on the sample and they wanted me to try out 20 different possible interaction terms. I'm like, yeah, no, that's, that's stupid, dude. Some of them are going to be just <laughs> randomly. Some of them are going to be significant too. Right. So you really, like, well, sure. Exactly. And also, yeah, I mean, it's like, you have to have theoretical reasons for yeah. why, you know, why, you know, that's the one of the things that really makes all this difficult is, I mean, we can sit here and talk about like Bayesian practice or the best practices and blah, blah, blah. But yeah, like a lot of it is if it's not theoretically sensible, whatever you're doing. Hey, um, you know what you didn't do is you didn't check your prediction accuracy. I was just curious how that would go. Wait, how do I do that again? Oh, you're talking about from from this using the sigma or, or where? No, you're supposed to, no, you split them up. So you're supposed to take the second one. <gasps> oh, that's right. Back. Oh my gosh. Thank I you. Was, I was just curious how that worked. After, out. after all of that, man. <laughs> Which, yeah, I don't know which fridge we should that. use. Good lord. Yeah, let's see. Let's see. Um okay, so let's call this fit four, I guess. Yeah. And um this is ran. You gotta remember how to do the predict with Stan GLN though. Yeah. What's that? Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. So we're so instead of well, yeah. Um right. Predict. I didn't even think about that. Let me just do it this way and then but, posterior uh, predict is that what we want? Yeah. So now you're saying, okay, yeah. So I was just, I'm fitting like a new, wait a minute, what's wrong? I guess I didn't have this one. Yeah, hold on. Let me actually, while that's running though, let me, um, where so is- the question I would ask just, uh, mm -hmm. what would, so there's three kinds of prediction, right? That he talked about, there's- Yeah. That was in the previous chapter, wasn't it? But still. Here we care about it too, right? So there was posterior prediction. 
Mm -hmm. Linear prediction, we called it. And then prediction prediction, right? Point prediction. Oh, right, point prediction. Oh, right, right, right. I see what you're saying. So, um, so yeah, if we use... Yes, here we want point prediction because we're going to be compares, comparing the predictions to the actual... Right, so this is Best actually... Data. This is what yeah. I mean. You want just a standard predict, yeah. Hold on. So, um, yeah, by the way, this is the new... I, I just re-ran the model. Okay. It's oh. the, same, the same model, it's just new data, right? So... Um, oh yeah, yeah. Same deal. Let's see, and then let's um, let's let's see what our interaction looks like. Oh, oh, much much less. Let's. That's by the way. That's a very non-interactive thing. Right. Parallel lines, more or less. Right. Well, that's what I expected to see the other time because you had zero for the interaction. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Um. Hold on. Well, while, while we're since we're um so let's let's do this it's it's fit um fit underscore three and then it's rand two I just want to see what this looks like oh that's what it does so it's for each of the values it's generate it's only it's just generating for yeah a prediction for that which we yeah compare yeah, we should compare that to the actual results, right? Yeah. Um, somehow. A plot would work somehow, but I don't know. If... Yeah, I'd have to like do a whole bunch of stuff, so I don't know if I really want to do it now, but. I agree. I, agree. Yeah, I feel, like, I feel yeah. you say live coding and like, how do I do this plot? I yeah, I don't want to try to do, do all this right now, but um, no, but this is super, I, I do, like I said, I love, Psychologists, I would say, social scientists in general, love looking at interactions. This is yeah. amazing, you know, because usually interactions are kind of like where cool stuff happens, right? It's like it's not yeah. usually, it's not usually like studying more helps you get better grades, although that seems obvious. But it's like being studying more with certain strategies, you know, or with certain you know right. opportunities gets you better grades and stuff like that. And so usually most interesting kind of social science or like i don't know or medicine too like for example medicine too, absolutely. i mean it's not yeah it's the effectiveness of statins depends on your risk of yeah. heart disease for example right well, yeah except that you know obviously i would say a lot of doctors don't want that situation right because they work for the statin producer I'm like, hey, <laughs> statins are actually useful. everybody should be on them <laughs> everyone should be on statins so i would say actually a lot of times they don't want an interaction but in sort of social sciences, you know, by doing interactions, you're getting at sort of like a much more nuanced kind of like specific uh, thing that's happened. Um, you want me to show you the uh, yeah the go ahead, 10. Sorry, 9, the collinear yeah. thing? I can do that. Yeah, go ahead and. Um, what are you using for a PDF reader? Me, I use a uh, Foxit. Oh, know. Foxit, Fox. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know about you, but like one of the biggest things I want is I want there to be like a cut where I can copy and paste lines and put it right. in something else. And a lot of those readers don't do that. It drives me nuts. I knew I thought that looked familiar because we used that at, at when I at the previous place I worked for. Yeah, because it was you know free or cheap. I forget which it was, but <laughs> yeah, it also works really well. Yeah. All right. So yeah, okay. Oh, I shared the wrong thing. Hang on a minute. That's right. Sure, the book. We don't care about that. Um, are you, you going to try to do the other two types of uncertainties? No, I'm going to no. I was going <laughs> to look at um, exercise ten point nine. Here's our studio. Oh, okay. Just to show, I mean, I did do it. I just want to. Yeah, no, see, see I moved it. Yeah, so this is the problem was to take a look at the the same economic fork uh, vote as a function of growth, right? Economic yeah. growth. So the, the straightforward model you do shows this uh, growth um, is associated <laughs> right, with uh, uh, incumbent growth, inc incumbent. So, no, growth, so right? basically, if there's no growth, the incumbent still gets, well, 46.5. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. By the way, here's something, I don't know if they talked about this, but like how, this whole mad SD thing. So like what we're basically saying is the median... It's not the mean; it's the median um, absolute deviation, right? Absolute, yeah, absolute deviation. But then it's scaled to have the same. If you, if if the data was normally distributed, it would have the same answer as the, as the standard deviation. 
so we're basically saying from like one one uh whatever place to the next or one year to the next i should say we're saying that the um the, the if with no growth we would expect there to be 46 percent going to the incumbent but that would range yeah. on average by 1.7 percent or something like that right yeah yeah so that was just what they did in the book already i just want to show you as the baseline that we got three plus minus 0. 0.7 for the growth uh coefficient what about, the, says, uh, what about the sorry i keep and now that we're doing no, this, no like, what about this whole auxiliary parameter thing like how do what do you take from that so the mean median is three points so that's basically the median that's uh, the irreducible error that's the residual predicted yeah. an actual y right 3.9 is the is the is the median uh value from the draws right of the residual standard deviation if you will which is the difference between the predicted and the actual y value. yeah right okay so it's the irreducible error part right so we're saying on average unexplained the unexplained variance <laughs> yeah Nope. Anyway, go ahead. Sorry, I, I, I always yeah. So this is the difference between the linear predictor and the predict and the posterior predictor, right? In that the uh, posterior the posterior predict includes that sigma as well, right? Okay. So then, what he wants us to do is just create wow, nice spelling yeah. there. Create a collinear variable, right? So that's all I did was just add in uh, collinear growth equals growth is as collinear as you can get, right? Oh, yeah, so you're, just, so you're just copying it. Yeah, right? you're copying it. So there you go, exactly the same. I could have scaled it, but, you know, no reason. You could have just, right? like, added some random noise or something. Well, no, that's the second, that's the next part. Oh, is so it? Okay, part, sorry. Yeah. So there's a directly correlated uh, case, and we run the model. See, now here's where we wish you had the printouts. Take something's happening, yeah. So you can see that now the growth, well, the important thing to notice is that the, the, the errors on these two parameters is huge, as we know, right? Yes, yes. Because they're because um, one if one goes up the other one can go down it's up, it works just as well right for the fit I guess. right and we can actually pull out so this is this um, something that's very useful you do as tibble on the model output so mod two is just what oh. you then Didn't you get a that. tibble um, which I guess I'm just gonna I always, yeah I always end up making it like a data frame and creating it but yeah if you can do that just simply in like in yeah you get you know this table with the parameters right? all the draws That's of the handy. parameters yeah which is handy so then i can just plop those two parameters to show yeah this is Ooh. as we expect right That's so awesome. growth and our anti-correlate or whatever right as we'd expect because if you increase the growth you can decrease the the growth <laughs> same thing right <laughs> yeah. right so the next part and this is what i was saying like okay if i just was just blindly didn't know that these things were equal to each other I'd be like, wow, that's too bad. I guess, you know, I can't do anything with that, right? I, I should, it's good to check what's going on to make sure you're very, you know, the, you look at this, you're actually just thinking of them as being independent, but they're not necessarily independent. Of course, in this case, they're highly independent, which is mm -hmm. nice because you can just see that directly with the samples from, uh, from Stan, which is kind of nice. Yeah. So the next thing I tried to do some algebra here <laughs> to try to All find right. the, because uh, it says create a new one that's got a standard, uh, that's basically has a correlation of 0.9. And so that kind of worked, but then it turns out because each time you draw samples, there's going to be some accidental correlation with the noise. Oh. So the actual numerical correlation, you know, the statistic correlation is not, not going to be exactly 0.9. So I just, actually, what is it? So now it's 0.77. So I just messed with the, oh, this one yeah. is too small. There's probably some way you could like tight, you could like tune that. So I, I should, you can, that's what this part up here, but you problem is every time you, you know, every time I run this, I'm getting a different data. It's, it's like, it's like, it's like, um, it's like uh, what do you call it? Like a quantum things. Like you can't measure. <laughs> yeah, so like, oh, come on. I keep hitting the wrong button. So I run it again. There we go. That's point nine. Right? So, I was, <laughs> so I was messing with the standard deviation. And I realized, oh, it just matter every single time it matters. So now all I'm doing is taking this nearly collinear growth is equal to growth plus some random noise, like you were suggesting, right? Right. And there we go, right? So this, if you looked at this, if you're looking at your data, going, hey, wait a minute, these are pretty highly correlated, right? Mm -hmm. Point nine, actually. And you that you're saying that um, I could have used that. Um, I already forgot what it's called now. What was it called? That tool? The thing that I sent you, or what do you mean? Inflation factor. Oh, yeah, yeah. Would help, Sorry. Would help yeah. me with this kind of thing, I presume. But nevertheless, you can fit it. 
And now the errors are less, right? Because they're not as collinear, but they're still bigger than they were originally by like a factor of two mm -hmm. on growth. And again, you know, you can just plot this and see how correlated they are. Mm. It's kind of cool. So I'm wondering, like, if I actually did have this, and these, I didn't, you know, there's no reason for me to expect anything. Let's just say I had two parameters, and they had this relationship between each other. Maybe they both have information in them. I don't want to just use one of them. So I was thinking, you could. Is there some uh, methodology where, like, maybe it's like principal components analysis, actually, right? PC. My That's program. one. You know, to be honest with you, I mean, well, first of all, this is tricky because I mean, like, this isn't a typical collinear situation because you're just creating your kind of right forcing here's it. what i would say like you know if, if, if this was like well i mean i guess presumably this is like an economics problem the way that you i mean the elections yeah. it's it's right. yeah so it's i would say my 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 advice would be you could do the principal component stuff but like presuming i guess it depends if if you can make the theory i think a lot of this has to do with not stats i think a lot of that has to do with theory if you can right. make sort of like a theoretical argument that like you know, NL growth for, for whatever reason, like this is the reason why you should use this over growth. That's the best solution to right. me personally. Um, but if you can't make that, you know, or like, you know, if you get like somebody who's like hell bent on using both somehow, then yeah, you, you would use principal component. Okay. Cause I can see like maybe growth has mostly, basically most of it, but then NL growth is correlated with it highly, maybe not that highly correlated, let's say in a real case, it might have some more information in there. It might, but um, I guess another question I would ask, and I didn't do, I, I guess I'll think about later. But does adding, you know, like you said, adding these things cause big errors in the coefficients, but does it really hurt the predictions? Like, if I'm only care about making a predictive model, I don't care about the, I don't care about the actual coefficients. I just care about how well it does the prediction. Is it okay just to add in another? I don't know. I have to check that out, but. I, my, my, I guess my I guess what I would say as a sort of a retort would be it's unlikely that you would have great prediction yeah. you know um I mean that being said we all know machine learning people who throw like the kitchen sink. They, everything right just put an xg boost throw everything in there put an xg boost yeah. turn the crank I found some <laughs> other random unrelated data through that and it got better you know it's like <laughs> that's 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 sort of the um common um oh. Strategy, which you know, that's not the strategy I would recommend in this type no. of data. I would be like, you know, think about what it is that you're trying to predict, and okay. you, know, you can try both and see what happens, and then you can report about. Oh, you know, we tried both. And hey, yeah. Brian, just give me one second. I have to go use the restroom. Believe it or not. Oh yeah, go. It's fine. Go ahead. I'll, I'll, I can wait. Yeah, no worries. I guess I would wonder if principal, if you're doing a prediction, whether the principal component analysis step is actually necessary. That's what I was trying to think. I guess it would fit better though, right? Yeah. It's not fit better, but fit more stably. I mean, the numerically yeah. would be better. It, that's it, one of the it, things that reminds me, like earlier you were saying about like centering and scaling your data. That's something that does help um, with the stability of some of these fits, especially for the hierarchical models where things get more complicated. Um, or if you have like weird distributions that tend to blow up that or weird, not just weird, weird link functions, you know, like exponential links and whatnot. It's sometimes important to scale your data. I found out the hard way one time. Yeah, no, for sure. Did. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess, you know, the, the, my only like, thing, like pushing back at that is to say that like a lot of times. Not for linear though. More data doesn't necessarily, I mean, because here's the thing. It's like, it's really hard to interpret, you know, like, um, PCA scores, you know what I'm saying? It's like, what does right. what, what a PCA score mean? Like, I, I, you know, growth as a, you know, if it's some economic, you know, scoring indicator or whatever, that's, that's, you know, at least sensible, I guess. Although, I don't know, I but your point is, 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 is a valid one. Just for fun, I'm gonna make it much less correlated. It's still correlated. Yeah, see, now it almost works pretty good. Hmm. They're a lot less correlated though. So I guess that makes sense. Right. Yeah, it's um the inflation is less. And it was 0.7, now it's 0.9. It's not as bad of an inflation. Actually, yeah. Interesting. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, I guess you know what's interesting. What's interesting here is um I just realized if I increased the standard deviation to two, mm -hmm. uh, the thing. But what I also did, of course, is make 
NL growth much more very you know much more noisy than growth is the variance of NL growth is going to be a lot more than the variance of growth yeah so it turns out that that means the model now leans more heavily on growth right right less on this and it's like this is basically unimportant this is the only thing that matters so in some cases I guess even though they're correlated it kind of sorts it so well <laughs> interesting yeah I mean like this is I mean the, what you're doing though this kind of like forensic examination of like what's doing what I mean I think I think one of the things that I've learned about doing modeling and stuff like this is there's no way to, I mean, it's like you kind of have to do it for each project, you know what I mean? And kind of like, you know, tweak, like, okay, you know, do all these things that you're doing, right? Where you're, let's try the model with this and let's try the model without it. Yeah. And see, and obviously, I mean, you're doing simulations, so you're, you're manipulating things. Well, that's one of the themes of this book, right? Fake data, data as a yeah. way of life. So this oh, is something yeah. that you probably should do with all, any model that matters. Once you, or, you know, you should go back and like, oh, let's generate, if it's a generative model anyway, which, these Bayesian models are, you yeah. should generate some data that's realistically similar to what you have right. and uh, see how it works. Yeah. Even for non-generative models, there are, way, I, there are ways to do that using um, neural networks, believe it or not. I just, I just learned about this the other day. These um, There's a library that will generate artificial tape tabular data that has the same statistics as this tabular data you have. It's kind of meant for an anima, anonymizing it, but is completely off the that sounds crazy i mean especially if you have really complicated data you know i just found out about by accident so hey, did you ever end up doing that uh, open hpi thing with the, the bayesian course because no i never did. i never got around to it and man i wanted to but it's um where is that thing i'll probably never find that again Tabular synthetic data generation. I wonder if that can be used though for um, if you have a model like XG Boost or whatever that's not generative in any sense to to test it with fake data. But I guess it doesn't really help because you don't have the. The nice thing about this is I know what the, what's going on, right? I know what the truth is because I generated it. Whereas. Well, no, this is not the case. I mean, I know part of the truth. I guess in this case, not fully fake data because we're actually using real data. But if I generated completely fake data, then I would know like, oh, what the underlying coefficients are, what the underlying intercepts are and everything else. Yeah. Anyway, kind of. Um, I got I got a meeting I got prepped for. Oh, yeah. Or I think we're good. Let me, so, so, so let's just talk next week. So you were on this, the schedule for yes. next week. Are you still doing this so she can take over for you? Or what's what's the... No, I'm still doing it unless you want to. No, I'm planning on doing it though. I'll go ahead and take 12 then just unless okay, good. I'll take it for now. And if she wants to take it, we can always revisit, but yeah. hopefully we get Gabby back. Was Gabby here last week? I don't know. I wasn't here. She was here for only a short period of time. Um, she was muted most time. I think she might've been in the middle of some other stuff. So hopefully we get her back though. I like her inputs. Yep. All right. Well, hey, um, that was, was great uh, on the fly. <laughs> yeah. Good discussions. I liked yeah. it. But yeah, no, check out the, the SJ plot thing, man. It's um, a great way. It's actually a pretty, you can do plots. Wow. For your, I was impressed by that. Yeah, yeah. And you, <laughs> it's great for, um, like, yeah, he's got all kinds of different plots and, like, interactions and marginal effects and blah, blah, blah. So anyway, I put my name down for the um, the 12, chapter 12. We'll Perfect. Go from there. So Okay. I'll, Thanks, I'll see Ryan. You. Have a good day. See you next week. Bye. Yep.